All right, guys, let's talk about um, hot topic uh, in today's market, which is, it's not just chip shortages, it's material shortages. Um, so what's talked about most, right, is the little chips, right, the little SOCs or the microprocessors that no one can get. Um, every large OEM, established OEM is facing challenges here. Every electric vehicle startup is facing challenges here. Um, but I think what we want to go through and talk about today is what are we doing as Atlas to try and not just mitigate these issues right now, but what are we doing right now that can mitigate these issues in the future? Because there's no way to predict whether or not this is going to happen again. It might be long lasting uh, in terms of how we sort of face these challenges. Um, so I think, and I think it really breaks down into a couple of categories is kind of like, what are we doing from a software and hardware perspective, like from an engineering and development perspective? What are we doing from an implementation perspective in terms of how we're implementing it to the vehicle? What are we gonna do from a supply chain perspective to try and mitigate that? Um, and how do those sort of three target or those three topics tie back into um, what our strategy is around this different stuff, right? Like how do we keep moving forward, especially as a smaller startup and not a larger startup? So I think Ben, if you wanna kick us off, we can talk about um, sort of what we're doing from the supply chain side to kind of give ourselves enough leeway right to set ourselves up for the next couple of years yeah the first thing we're, we're doing is um, first we are uh, making sure we are placing purchase orders uh, more than a year in advance um, so we have all the chips we need for production another thing is that actually we're using some of those chips we're using are like new generation chips and they mm -hmm. don't have the same shortage because uh, nobody's using them at the moment and so that gives us an, an advantage to but the main, um, the main um, uh, tool we have to, um, to protect ourselves against those problems is that we control the complete architecture. We don't have suppliers deciding for us which chips we're using. And also we are reusing the same uh, component all around the vehicle, which just gives us uh, uh, higher volumes, but also less components uh, we're gonna, you know, have to uh, fix shortages for, and um, and also, yeah, I think that's a, that's the main uh, issue. Issues we're fixing, the main way we're fixing those issues. Right. So it's just it's forward planning, right, from a supply chain perspective, simplification of the architecture, and then from even a hardware or software perspective, right, we're using sort of one chip that's brand new today, but maybe it's built on a previous generation solution that we could technically drop in if we needed to, but the existing market is using some of these older chips, chips that they, or, or microprocessors that they've used for the last several years, maybe the last seven plus years. Yeah. Um, and everyone's fighting for that same one, whereas we're trying to stay ahead of the technology curve, right? To try and sort of push things forward and make sure that when we do launch, we're launching kind of, you know, not, in a trailing edge from a technology perspective, right, or, or the tail of it, we're sort of at the forefront of it as we move forward. Um, so we, you said something else in there too around um, sort of the, the supply chain side and forward thinking, issuing POs down the road um, and planning for sort of future production. And I think right now we're planning for into 20, well, through 2022 yeah. in current production numbers, right? But the one other unique thing is that we don't use that many of each of these um, little microprocessors or components and parts in the vehicle because we've cut down on the number of different body control modules that are in there and we own it too. Yeah. Right? You mentioned that too. So, um, you know, Sindri, like your team or, or you, are, you're doing all the hardware design for this stuff. We're not relying on a supplier for it. Sean, you and the, the software and firmware team, right? You guys are doing all the software development for us. There is no middle person in there. And we're not jockeying for position with that middle person. So those are some interesting things. Um, Sindri, we, we were talking earlier today about, you know, how do we design the hardware around um, sort of planning for this as well? Um, do you wanna, yeah. like, it, it's an interesting concept, right? Of, like typically you design hardware and it's fixed. For like mm -hmm. the solution that you have, but how do we remain flexible so yeah. we can pivot if we need to? 
So there's a different techniques we can do. You talked about simplification, so that's one thing we're doing. I can go back to that, uh, but also in kind of short term for both prototyping, also long term, we want different variants or different uh, um, chips we can actually use, especially for the power supply size. Mm -hmm. We can make the layout for two di different solutions that will work the same. But if there's a shortage on one of the solutions, we can quickly just say pop with the other solution instead and kind of have that switch over to something that's uh, in production or in volume that we can use uh, as a replacement. And then we're working a lot um, with modularizing a lot of things. So if we have problems in one part of our systems, we can continue manufacturing in other parts while we're working on solving those problems on the module side when we're trying to simplify the system we're making. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we're trying to optimize our architecture into making, putting on different types of, uh, um, um, or a previous generation of a similar chip with a similar footprint that would also work for our application. So we have multiple options in our designs. Okay. So when we talk about modular architecture, right, it's sort of like we, each component, each system, right, yeah. is designed in such a way that we can plug in sort of plug a new one Pretty in much, right? yeah. a secondary one in there. And we're kind of doing something similar on the software side, right? Where we, we're we doing sort of this application layer versus something else, right? Yeah, so in the software, it's really important to have good abstraction mm -hmm. where you have your uh, application layer and it's separate from everything else, from your drivers, from your firmware, from your hardware. And that allows you to easily swap out any of the lower layers and still use your application layer and not have to rebuild everything. So that's, that makes the biggest difference with that. Also carefully choosing your tool set so that it can run on multiple different platforms so you don't have, if you do have an issue such as a chip shortage, you don't have to rewrite your whole application layer to get it to work on the new hardware. I think we're using more of a, we're using a lot of universal tool sets, right? Yes. In terms of sort of, not one that's specific to like NXP or TI or, or Infineon or whatever it is, right? It's sort of like one, Mm -hmm. We're trying to stay as broad as we possibly can, but the lower yeah. level might have something specific, right? For yeah, somebody. obviously there has to be changes, um, but it's important to keep those minimum. And uh, one of the nice things about not having any legacy hardware or anything is we're we're able if we write our software correctly, we're able to quickly switch out. Now, is it possible that let's say we're building firmware for a system, mm -hmm. um, we could identify which chip it is, right? And, and that sort of vehicle goes up, perhaps that firmware update from say the cloud, they pull it back down mm -hmm. for that specific chip solution, the lower level side of that, but maybe mm -hmm. the application layer doesn't necessarily change. So we, we could technically update each layer independently yes. in terms of what we do from a firmware perspective. Yeah, correct. and still have the application layer. Uh, okay. no, no difference to the user. Okay, so then it's sort of like, from a quality perspective, right, we're minimizing our impact, or if we change the application layer, that can go up broad. Yes. To every sort of chip solution that's there, while the lower level layer maybe stays cons um, independent, I guess. Exactly, by keeping the layers separate. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. That's also the point of the service oriented architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we are using AutoBlade Ethernet. Um, so that also helps solving those issues. So, we, yeah, we have no CAN anywhere in the vehicle, right? Everything is no automotive can. Ethernet, yeah. which would be a first, I guess, in the industry. So, oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, so I mean, when we think about it, right, we're, we're doing things to keep ourselves diverse and flexible on the software side. We're doing it from a hardware perspective with modularization of the solutions, and then we're taking that a bunch of steps further in terms of the system architecture and what we do uh, in terms of using one chipset solution or one solution and then broadening it throughout the vehicle, eliminating the number of independent sort of variables or solutions that are in the vehicle, eliminating the number of components, driving that down, but then the cool thing is we own it all in-house. So there is no external supplier driving that we're competing with even from with another manufacturer, um, which is very cool because that means if we have a problem today, we can all sit in the room, hash it out, come up with a solution for it, we can pivot on it, and by tomorrow we're already marching down a different path versus something that typically takes weeks or months to do. So it's a lot of cool, that, I mean, that's, that's a lot of cool. That's a lot of fun, right? I mean, it's very cool in terms of how Atlas operates, right? We can make decisions in minutes versus days, weeks, and months. So um, thanks guys, appreciate it. This is, you know, we wanna talk about this stuff, right? Like what are the big topics in the industry? What are the big challenges? Um, chip shortages, materials, plastics, metal, whatever it is, these are all big topics for us. So thank you.